say thank you, Jesus, for your grace, your mercy, your favor upon my life. I am in your presence. Give me the grace to remain in your presence by your word and your spirit. In Jesus Christ's name, shall we clap for Jesus. Thank you. We may be seated. Sorry, I was looking at um, um, my budget, what I budgeted for you, and what I, I have seen is beyond me now. So I was sitting down there asking God how to go about this one. Because if you don't know, a day like this will never come back again in life. Mm -hmm. A day like this one will never come back. Maybe after our generation. And I'll call you, you bear with me. I want you to understand the importance of this covenant Sunday. I'll call you from Noah up to Abraham, Joshua, and then Jesus, so that you understand this. We are saving a covenant-keeping God. I talked about this issue two weeks ago. I said our sacrifice will start with 3,000 kwacha up to 15. Look, how many people have gone to the world of silence from our family because of these shulines, because of these evil covenants. It's uncountable. Now, people may think that uh, I want to make money out of that. No, God is my witness. No, it's not to make money. It's to build the house of God, a, 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 a house of what? which will stand as a covenant for our generation and the generation to come. And I'll prove you people that what I'm saying is not just from this mind. It is from the Holy Spirit. Even before I left for Israel, this word has been in me for almost uh, three months. If you, you find it, you know, so easy. <clears throat> Uh, to defeat your enemy, then that is not the real battle. Where you are fighting, there must be, you know, something, bruises, to see that through this man or this woman is coming from where? They fight. But you are looking at money. If it is money, for me personally, the money that I spend for this program is enough for me to satisfy myself. It is not money. It is not money. And if you start asking questions for something which came from the Holy Spirit, you are making a mistake. You cannot ask a question, you know, the, to say, Holy Spirit, what about me? Me, I'm poor. It's like you are telling God that you want to remain poor. You want to do what? You, want, you need to fight it hard so that you defeat your enemy. If your enemy is defeated, then your children are the children yet unborn shall glorify your father. Are you getting me? Please, people of God, we are not doing this to make money. No. Money for what? Kutu wafwa. Indalama shenu, shama problem zuku mebe chinka. And you eat that money, do you think you are going to live a normal life? No. You take that money to God. For that family to be released, if you build the house of God, you are establishing an altar against that shrine. So if you start asking questions, what about me? You need to change the manage. Then you are telling God that God, you are a failure. You are what? If you surrender yourself to him, it is now God to see your heart. To say, oh, my daughter or my son want to do this. I'll make a way for you to build my house. Even where it seems to be nowhere, God will make a way for you so that you manage to be part of this, you know, <laughs> history. History 
will prove you a wrong. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So, it is entirely up to you whether you contribute or not. For me, I thought I should include you in this. There are people who want to help me to build the house of God here using their own word. No, it's not right. We need to be part of this. This is the mistake people are making. There are people who want to sacrifice and build the house of God here after hearing this word from me. Then I said, no, the children of God must be part of this. If we allow someone to come and build a covenant house, then we are not part of the covenant. If you don't know. I am not doing this to eat your money. I don't eat people's money. No. I want you to be part of the brother you see standing before you. If you know where I am coming from, you agree with me that yes, it's Jesus who has raised you from ashes to the grace. I'm telling you. So bear with me. Don't ask any question what, what concerns what? The contribution or the sacrifice, no. If you cannot afford, just surrender your heart. Simple. Surrender your what? Simple. There's no need for you to be panicking. What about me? Just surrender your heart. Jesus sees your heart. Hmm? Because which that debate if you are then you are removing God. You are putting yourself there. Let me ask you this question. Is it possible for a man like me to bring 5,000 people in this place? No. You are a busy people. Know for sure that God is involved. What pushed you to come to this place is the Holy Spirit. And I know that your life will never be the same again. Let me tell you now. We start um, with Genesis 9. Genesis chapter 9, verse 1, and Genesis chapter 17. We look at Noah first. Then we go to Joshua chapter 24, verse 25. Then we go to 1 Samuel chapter 5, verse 1. So that we see from there, we go to Hebrews chapter 9 and Hebrews chapter 10. We we'll marry all these things so that we know exactly why is it important for you to make a covenant. At first, if you don't know, God made a covenant with Adam and Eve by giving them instructions. They did not follow the instructions. Let's go to Genesis 9. Genesis chapter 9 verse 9. Let me take you now. I now establish my covenant with you and with your generation after you. 10. And with every living creature that was with you, the birds, the livestock, and all the wild animals. Are you reading the same Bible? Are you reading the same Bible? This is Noah. This is what? That is the covenant God Almighty was made after the destruction of human beings. He made another covenant. Let me repeat this one. I now establish my covenant with you and with your descendants after you. And with every living creature that was with you, the birds, the livestock, and all the wild animals. All those came out of the ark with you. That is where the ark was started. It started with what? Noah. A big what? Boat. They entered the ark. We all know the story. There is no need for me to continue talking about this. Listen to verse 11. I establish my covenant with you. Never again will all life be destroyed by the waters of the flood. Never again will there be a flood to destroy the earth. This is the covenant he made to say, Nshake paipo muntu kunshi kumenshi na foti. Bapange chipanga no. 
This is Noah. Verse 12. And God said, this is the sign of the covenant I am making between me and you and every living what creature with you. A covenant for all generation to come. A covenant for what? All generation to come, including you and me. That was then. Therefore, I'm left to come. Because you don't lay my people, I'm a people to lay people on the moon. Prepare your heart. If you don't want to that is healing. When you see the hack, that is another level of faith now to bring down your enemy. Praise the Lord. If you if you less Alan Dile Nanoa. What does it mean to you and me? Simply means God of Israel is a covenant keeping God. He made this covenant with Noah. Let's go to Genesis 17 because you can go and read it with your own time. Listen to seven, chapter 17 verse 1. When Abram was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to him and said, I am God Almighty. Walk before me faithfully and be blameless. Two, then I will make my covenant between me and you and will greatly increase your numbers. Verse three, Abram fell face down and God said to him, as for me, this is my covenant with you. You will be a father of many nations. That is another what? With who? With Abraham. Meaning, starting from Noah up to Abraham, God was, you know, still repeating the same word. Word covenant. Covenant. Covenant is like a a, 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 something that will bind you together. You promise each other to stick whatever you agreed upon. If you are going to break one, then the relationship between you and me is what? Is finished. I am not including your fathers and mothers here in Africa. Let me finish this one. Then I'll come back to you so that you marry this two. Praise the Lord. Let's go to Joshua 24. Joshua 24, verse 25. On that day, Joshua made a covenant for the people there at Shechem. He reaffirmed for the, for the degrees and the laws. 26. Joshua recorded these things in the book of the law of God. Then he took a large stone and set it up there under the oak under oak near, I mean, under near the holy place of the Lord. So let me read this one again so that you get the point. Verse 26. And Joshua recorded these things in the book of the law. Then he took a large stone and set it up there under the oak near the holy place of the Lord. He said in 27, See, to all the people, this stone will be a witness against us. It hates all the words the Lord has said. This is another what? Covenant. What does generation to generation, God is still repeating what? Meaning you cannot save him without that covenant. Before I take you to the message of today, if you not simulate la, therefore I'm quite a clear picture. Kwebatile Satan bile fioku la pepwa kubantu. Remember, Philistines were there. Different tribes were there. Egyptians were there. But he chose Abraham. And the father of Abraham, the man by the name of Tela, was an idol worshiper. If you don't know, Abraham was picked and his nephew. He said, I'll separate you from your family and take you to the place I'll show you. 
There I'll make you to be a great man. And he became a great man because he obeyed the voice of God and he kept the covenant. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. This is now Joshua. That is after Abraham. I can count them and count them. Now, coming back to you before I take you to Hebrews 7. Here in Africa, my father, grandfathers, your father, your grandfathers, they never, never worship the creator of heaven and earth. They became Christians by just a mere confession. And yet, they were covenanted with the demons of the land. Even some of the names that we are bearing came from the, those demons. They were dreaming. Dead people appeared to them. To repeat the same word. Some of the names that we are calling, Yakwatama meaning Jaya Ayafrungana. They never worship him. They were seeking solutions. In search of solution, they encounter demons, snakes, spiritual snakes who appear in a physical form to deceive our forefathers. They made a covenant to the extent whereby human beings' bloods were involved in a secret way. Some of your fathers, your grandfathers became witch doctors, herbalists, ancestral, Every Sunday, they'll go to church. After Sunday service, they'll go back home, kneel down to the idols. And then you are confessing that your father or your grandfather was a Christian. Christianity is not just a mere confession. It is the reality of his presence in our lives. If you don't know, Jesus became the original copy of the Ten Commandments. Because the law was not, you know, helping human beings. Human beings are full of weakness. If you tell them that don't raise this, uh, you see, when you are back, you tell, please, don't touch this carpet. Ah, your son or your daughter will know, one day, they will open the carpet. And what they will find there is disaster. The law was not helping human beings. Because human beings are full of pretense. They will pretend to be what? Christians. And yet, inside their hearts, they are not. You can carry the law. At the end of the day, you are smoking, you are drinking, you are doing all evil things. But people who see you, they see you as someone who is straight. But the one who created you will see nothing but a sinner. Are you there? This is why the man Jesus came now. I'm taking you there. Let's go to Hebrews 7. Please bear with me. I'm just... In the first of which I introduced Kuri Jani, when you go home, go and sit down. Let's say, you don't 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 now, within 70 years, 60 years, barrenness will obey the presence of God. Amen. Don't be deceived by anyone telling you that you are poor. This is why we are here today. And I believe that you will see the grace of God upon your life. Let's go to Hebrews chapter 7, verse 8. Verse 18, I mean. The former regressions is set aside because it was weak and useless. It's not me. It's written. I don't know your Bible. This is an idea. For the law made nothing perfect and the better hope is introduced by which we draw near to God. 
20. It was not without an oath. Others became pleased without an oath. 21. But he became a pleased with an oath. When God said to him, the Lord has sworn and will not change his mind. You are a pleased forever. 22. Because of this oath, Jesus has become the guarantor of a better word, covenant. A guarantor of a better word. Simply means you cannot enter into any covenant without a promise from God Almighty. This, Jesus is a sacrifice. If I take you back to Abraham, Noah, whatever, sacrifice. sacrifice. Uncountable animals where you're not being sacrificed. But when it comes to this man, Jesus, there's nothing like bring a God, bring what? He became the guarantor of what? I, I'm, there, I'm sure you are reading the Bible. Can I hear your Bible in the audience? Maybe mine is manipulating you. Can I hear someone in the audience? Read it for me. Just 22, my brother. Uh, Hebrews 7. Verse 22. 20. Hebrews 7, verse 22. It reads, By so much more, Jesus has become a assurance of a better covenant. Thank you. Look at verse 18. The former regression is set aside. Because it was weak and useless. 19, the Bible says that the law made nothing perfect. What does it mean? It simply means you can pretend to be someone who observed the law in the presence of the people. But when you are alone, what you are doing is contrary to what you are doing in the presence of the multitude. Simply means this one is weak, cannot help you. This is why the man Jesus came by the power of the Holy Ghost. To be with you. The paper cannot talk to you. The paper cannot con It is written on the paper. But without the Holy Spirit, it's useless. It's powerless. It's meaningless. Look at your family members. Go and ask your mom, your dad, your grandfather. No one can deceive you. No one can deceive you. 99% if it is not 100. It is now people are saying, no, if you are nembo. Before now, it was no more. And when you are marked in your body, remember that is initiation. You are initiated. Go outside, you see vehicles. There is Ford, there is Hilux. All these names that you hear for the vehicles are human beings' name. Those are the people who discovered how to make what? Ford. Now, my Ronari push up. I encountered one man 15 years ago who happened to be an elder in one of the churches. He said, My pastor, I'm going to go to Angoshe. Angoshe, I'm going to go to Angoshe. Then I looked at the man, we are discussing the word of God. And the man started now talking about if you are meeting Angosh. I said, look at this man. We are talking about the Holy Spirit. Now he has brought another issue. He said, He said, Angosh is poison. It shows that you are connected to the source of that Angosh. Are you there, people of God? This is why the man Jesus came as what? A sacrifice. I hope this one is clear. Is it clear? 
Listen to 23. No, let me just take you to chapter 9. Please bear with me. I'm not preaching. I'm just introducing you to this journey so that you understand why covenant Sunday today. No one has ever made any covenant with God Almighty in your family. It is today. It is what? Today. People may see it, you know, as a joke or as a program. This is not a program. This is not a program. We are saving a covenant keeping God. Where are you standing? Who is behind you? Which covenant are you under? Is it your forefather's covenant? L let's go. Verse 12. He did not enter by the means of the blood of gods and caves, but he entered the most holy place once and for all by his own blood, thus obtaining eternal redemption. Obtaining the blood of Jesus, obtaining what? Eternal what? You were liberated permanently through the blood of Jesus. This shows that there will be no sacrifice again from any human being apart from the, the man Jesus himself who died for you and me. Let's go. This is verse 13. The blood of gods and bulls and the ashes and of the ephah sprinkled on those who are ceremonially under unclean satisfy them so that they may they are outwardly clean. Hmm. Look at this one. So even those sacrifices they were doing were not even you making them clean inside. It was just, you know, outside. Now, let's go to 14. How much more then will the blood of Christ who through the eternal spirit offered himself and blemish to God, cleans our conscience from acts that leads to death, so that we may save the living God. So all these sacrifices they were making was not, you know, working or making anything different apart from the life they were living. It was the blood of Jesus that came now as a guarantor of a permanent what? Covenant. They used to sacrifice thousands and thousands, but it's still more. Sin was active. If you don't know, these people were changing like, you know, a chameleon. Today they will say, okay, we save the God of Abraham. Tomorrow they say, no, we are not interested. We follow the uh, other gods. We follow this. Go and read the Bible. You discover that even the kings were becoming, you know, useless sometimes. Except those like King David who obeyed him wholeheartedly. I'm sure you are getting something out of this. Praise the Lord. Let's go to 15. For this reason, Christ is the mediator of a new covenant that those who are called may receive the promise. Receive what? Eternal what? Eternal one one. Eternal what? And now that he has died as a ransom, to set them free from the sins committed under the first word. Which means the one your forefathers made was broken. He came now as a mediator between you and God Almighty. Look, you are, you are getting hot and you are worried. You, 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 you know, you have been fighting, fighting and fight to try, but, so that at least something will be there. At the, but at the end of the day, only problems. Something is working against you. Something is working against your, your children. It's working against your marriage. It's working against your business. It's working against anything that has to do with you. See problems that we are facing in our family. Take a stand. No, we remain here first. I want you to, to look at this one. Because my interest is where the word covenant is appeared. For this reason, Christ is the mediator of a new word, covenant. That those who are called may receive the promise. Eternal inheritance. That he has died. For the sins committed under the former word. Covenant. 
Ukishole salensa mbrisha ene fiwa kubati. Takulu winga pepale soko wabula ichipangano. Iselai. As long as there is no covenant. There is nothing like you are worshipping God. Muka wa mailo. Let's go to uh, the same book, 10. Ten, verse five. Please, when you go home, go and read these scriptures and ask God to lead you and guide you. Therefore, when Christ came into the world, he said, sacrifice and offering you did, you did not desire, but a body you prepare for me. This is now Jesus. Six, with burnt offerings and sin offering, you were not pleased. Seven, then I said, here I am. It is written about me in the scroll. I have come to do your will, my God. Eight, first he said, sacrifice, offerings, burnt offering and sin offerings. You did not desire or you were not pleased with them. Although they were offered in accordance with the law. Although they were offered in accordance with what? God was not pleased with their sacrifice. Do you know the reason? Pretense was calling their heart. Sacrifice. They were just doing it to please the people, not the creator. So God was not pleased with their sacrifice. This is why he prepared Jesus as a special what? Sacrifice for our sin. That's why Jesus said, you prepared the board for me. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let's go to verse um, 9. Then he said, here I am. I have come to do your will. He set aside the first to establish the second. It's the same thing. He set aside the first what? Covenant. To establish the second what? Covenant. Look. Let me remind you about this. As long as you are not led by the Spirit of God, you cannot understand this. You cannot understand this. You have been trying and trying fasting, you know, meeting men and women of God, prophets after prophets. Declaration after declaration. The covenant your grandfather made with that uh, spirit water is still active. Because of the name you are bearing. Because of the house where you are coming from. Something was buried on the ground. And declared that these are my children. These are my what? For the rest of their life, they are yours. Today, they are going to fall. The spirit operating through that name must fall. So that the spirit of God will reconnect himself to your, to your name. Because you work with the meaning of the word, you work with the word. You work with the word. You Ah. Listen to this. And by that will, we have been made holy through the sacrifice of the blood of Jesus Christ once and for all. People of God, take it serious. If you are not serious to make this covenant, you love the world more than the one who brought you to this world. There is no way you can live without keeping this covenant. There is no way you can live without obeying him. He is the one who brought you to this life. Remember, Noah came from the grandchildren of Adam and Eve, if you read the Bible. If you follow, I don't know, I, I, maybe I may not pronounce this name correctly, Metzela and other names. They were grand-grandchildren of what? 
Adam and Eve. And Noah came from this. Noah had how many children? Three. He made a covenant with Noah to say, I'll never kill anyone with water. He made another covenant with Abraham to say you'll be a father of so many people. He made another covenant with Isaac and Jacob. He continues to pronounce the same word. He made another covenant with King David. It's there. It's just that you know there's no time. If you go and read, you discover all this. Up to today, that covenant is active. Remember, the ark of covenant came from the first ark, the board. Noah make and entered with his family. After that, Lesa Isa Chinja number formula, Abapela Ak Inono, Abika Munama Fundea Kwe. Carry this. Anywhere where you are going, make sure that you carry the Ark of Covenant. Let me take you to First Samuel. I want to introduce you to this now so that you understand the importance of this ark. After the Pharisees had captured the ark of God, they took it from Ebenezer to Ashdod. Two. Then they carried the ark into Dagon's temple and sat beside Dagon. When the people of Ashdod rose early the next day, there was Dagon fallen on his face on the ground before the ark of God, of the Lord. They took Dagon and put him back in his place. Who is Dagon? Dagon is the idol, the god of the Philistine. Because the Israelites were not maintaining their relationship with God Almighty. The Philistine fought them and captured the ark. And they took the ark to their temple. And this is the temple of Dagon, the god of the Philistine. They put it beside Dagon's statue. The following day in the morning, when they woke up, they discovered that Dagon was lying down before the ark of God. They took it back again to the place. Another day, if you lead, they discover that Dagon has gone down. Their hands are broken. Their neck is broken. Then they realize that, ah, you know what follows? Death. The Pharisees started now having what? Death. What you call epidemic. Epidemic is a situation that you cannot control with your knowledge or your standard. Before you know it, thousands of people will go. Like cholera. You know cholera. When cholera comes, or the one which, you know, shook the world. Uh, COVID. That is an epidemic. When it came, ah, we have lost brothers, friends. That is an epidemic. It came like a wind blowing so fast. Then they realized that, oh, we have made a mistake. The, the God of Israel is going to punish us or kill all of us. What he did to the Egyptians is going to do the same thing to us. They consulted their magicians. What are we going to do with this, you know, ark of God? They are fortune tellers tell them to say, take it back to those people and make sure that you carry something. I'm talking to you now. Know where you are coming from. That Dagon besides your life, when you carry the ark of God, must fall and give way to your life. Because God cannot be, you know, reduced to human level or compared to the shrines that our forefathers used to worship. No. God Almighty is all. 
Are you leading this one? Listen to verse 4. But the following morning when they rose, there was Dagon fallen on his face on the ground before the ark of the Lord. His head and hands had been broken off and were lying on the threshold. Only his body remained. Are you there? Are you there? People of God, are you there at the back? Today, that dagon from your grandfather will fall down. That dagon opposing the will of God, fighting you because of your weakness, destroying your business, destroying your children, must fall and say, Jesus is Lord. Is it our ministry, your ministry, that evil spirit? Do you know that through this uh, mistake they made, they introduced all of us to spiritual wife and spiritual husband. Through that tools, they mark our body. This snake now became our wife and our husband. Is it normal? It is because of these tattoos. In a boy, she become movie. The ballet to stay in shed. Takuri kona nguma muntu inga sanga solution kululembo nangula kunganga. Where God is involved, He always provides. I am standing here today as your brother. We are going to make a new covenant. In fact. No one has ever met any covenant with God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in my family. I don't know your family. This is why today we'll make this covenant. For you and me and for our children and the children yet unborn. Let's Abraham Chapwa. Because it is not a Abraham. Abraham. Isaac and what? And then if you hear that covenant, so what is covenant? You know what is covenant today. You will know what is what? I'm sure all this journey from Noah up to where we are. Are you clear with this covenant Sunday? Yes. Are you clear with this covenant Sunday? Yes. Are you clear? Yes. Let the grace of God be upon your life. Yes. Go and ask the father or the mother. These are my people. Ah, who give you these people? He said, go and ask the grandfather. I'm going to bring the ark now so that you understand this. If you are connected to any shrine, we are not here to manifest, please. please. We are not here to do what? We are here to be delivered and disconnected completely. We are here to be what? And disconnected completely. This hack came from God Almighty. He is higher than your forefathers. Greater than that shrine. Powerful than that witch doctor in your family. And today, that spirit of witchcraft must fall. But atanga bari nindo shumpa shuwaburo shufile wafwa. If that amen is from your heart, you will receive the grace. Be on your feet.
Sacrifice for my sins and the sins committed by my forefathers. As I build your temple, rebuild my life. Say, as I build your altar, destroy, destroy the shrine in my family. As I stand before your altar, Destroy the shrines in my mother's family. I can't hear you. Take it serious. As I stand before your altar, destroy every shrine from my father's side and my mother's side. In your name, Jesus, I paralyze them, I render them powerless. In your name, Jesus, I command them to be arrested. In your name, Jesus, I destroy them. Mm -hmm. Remain quiet. I'm, I'm, I'm just preparing you. Whatever they have put in your body as a point of contact, they have incited in your life to see you to fight you, to destroy you, to manipulate you, whether they have put it in your blood. It is time you allow the Holy Spirit to do his job. Even those who are outside, please, I want them to know that we are here. Whatever is connected to you, that is your dragon today. That is your dragon from your forefathers. They must fall. Let me pray. You can stand. Father, this is the day that you have made. For me and your children to make a covenant with you. God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, we are not doing this to make a name, but to honor you for the gift of life and for the grace you have put upon our lives. Father, for the sake of our future and the future of our children and our grandchildren, we obey your voice to build a house for you in honor of your holy name that we believe in you, the only true and living God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. We honor you. We glorify you. And we surrender all to you. May it honor you and please you, Father, that you respond to our cry, that you show your mercy and your favor for the sins committed by our forefathers and our sins, because we realize that it is only you, the way, the truth, and life. King of kings, Lord of lords, 
you divide the Red Sea for the sake of your name to be honored. Today we are here, Father, in honor of your holy name that you divide our Red Sea for the sake of our salvation and the salvation of our children in the mighty name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, we acknowledge your presence. This is your land and it shall remain your land forever. As we establish a new covenant, a church to honor your name, all your children who are here, they are no longer connected to any shrine, but connected to your covenant. The blood of Jesus shall speak and cry for them for the salvation of their souls. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for accepting our prayer, for accepting our sacrifice. In Jesus Christ's name.